All right guys, what up? It's David from Premium and today I'm gonna to show you guys how to wrap a front bumper. Um, luckily today we're gonna to be doing three different types of bumpers. We're gonna be doing this Range Rover bumper behind us with the Enos Tech film. And we're also going to be doing the, uh, I believe it's a Chevy 350, 3500? The 2500 oh, AT4. 2500 AT4. There we go, thanks Jack. We're gonna be doing that one in an Avery, um, Carmine Red, I believe, Gloss Carmine Red. And uh, they're gonna be different materials, so you're gonna see the concepts of stretch between an Enosec uh, film versus an Avery film. All right guys, so just a quick rundown of what we're gonna do with this bumper right here. Adrian I already cut out the material. Um, with this film, it's a little bit more used to applying more heat, but less of a stretch or a pull. So this film's already pre-shrunk from factory and pre-stretched from factory. Sorry about that, Adrian. Uh, anyways, uh, so the, what we're gonna do with this film is we're gonna apply it right here and Adrian's gonna go ahead and hold this side while I just heat it up and what he's gonna do is he's just gonna hold it with tension but not pull how we traditionally pull with the old techniques. Um, this is something that I learned in the Enos Tech class called the zero stretch method and it's been working really really well for us here. What Adrian is doing right now is he's going ahead and like wiping it down with alcohol making sure all the edges and all like the little crevices have no dirt just because with this film it's really staticky and once you get debris behind the film it's really difficult to take out. So what he's doing, he's wetting the wheel well area and any additional surrounding areas around the vehicle and also down at the bottom just so that when we pull the material off of the liner it doesn't attract any more dust particles inside. wants to let you guys know that you wet the backing because it uh, prevents any more static from going into the back of the film. First step is to just kind of give it a cold tug in the middle. That way that gets kind of gets glassed out. Do you have enough? I'm good. Do you have enough? Yes, I do. All right, All right. Go ahead and give it a cold pull. I'm gonna kind of just drop this side down and go to your side. All right. I mean, this bumper is not difficult just because it's not so rounded like this other one. So I'm gonna show you guys a different technique on how to do that one. Little bit right there. So I'm just holding. Yeah, so now what you want to do, guys, is Adrian's in the correct position. He's he's getting kind of level with me and where I have to be at. And he's just basically in a hold it with tension. And as you guys see these wrinkles go away, the uh, bumper is just gonna glass itself out. So once these wrinkles start to go away, start to go slowly, okay? Got you, boss. Got it, boss. Come on, a little bit more. Right there. So the key to this is you guys want to heat up and down. And since the material is already kind of pretty stretched, it's then it true. will go ahead and just glass out. So we're going again. A little bit slower. A little bit more attention. I'm giving a good amount. Now that we already made it, you go. Made it. There you go. Now the most important part about this is even though we did already shrink it technically, we should always heat our hedges just to make sure that they go down. Look at that. So as you guys saw, um, the whole concept between Enos Tech is that we're not, we're not trying to stretch the film too much. We're just heating it up and slowly letting the film technology work into itself. So it's basically just heating the whole thing up, letting it shrink, molding it onto the panel. So that's the difference between Enos Tech versus Avery, what we're about to show you next. So the difference between this bumper and this other bumper, as you guys saw, that one's a little bit more flat. This one is a little bit more rounded out. Like that. So with this film, that concept won't work because it doesn't shrink as much as that film. So what we need to do with this one is give it a nicer pull. That way, when we pull the film at a very like angled way this way, we're gonna have the lines running horizontally so it could just wrap over. So it's basically kind of like wrapping a door handle. 
And we're gonna show you guys that next. All right, with this bumper, um, I'm gonna need a couple hands just because I don't have it on the car, so it's not as sturdy. So that's when I'm gonna have to probably have someone hold it here. And you guys are gonna see that we're gonna be able to stretch it along this way. That way, um, it doesn't fall off the stand. Or okay. Let's have him heat the center. So what Anthony's gonna do, he's gonna heat the center. We're gonna give it some tension already. That way it kind of gets a small little stretch going. Go ahead and give it a good pull, Adrian. Keep it up and down. All right, go ahead and pull it. Yep, pull it. Pull it. You sure you got enough? I got lots. I got quite a bit too. Uh, what do you want me to drop this side and support on your side or? Um, pull? Yeah. Pull? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm gonna drop this. Yep. a little bit slower like over there you can see how there's still wrinkles hold on hold on hold on and then help spread right here all right so as you guys saw with this material, it is, a little, it is a little bit more stretchy, but you need a little bit more hands because it's off the car. But the concepts are still the same. You just have to pull it really good. That way the film wants to grab around itself versus um, just having a lot of tension running this way. So now that the bumper is fully glassed, now we can go ahead and squeegee the air out. And just like every other panel that we do, we always use the 50-50 method, meaning we just go, so that it would be using this much overlapping this much so you always want to overlap and some of these little micro scratches that you guys see in the film um, those will go away in the sun so don't worry about it too much but you always want to make sure that you have a clean buffer small little bubbles like these will go away you just have to push them out and we do sell wrap gloves so go ahead and find those in our website and you can find this sweater as well. And another tip guys, so before you do any trimming, you always want to heat your panel up just to make sure everything is relaxed. Because if you trim it, if you guys trim it and then you guys don't relax the film, it's going to peel back on you. So you want to make sure you relax all of the film and you want to post heat it right before you trim. When I cut, I like to have a little bit of excess material. That way, I could just go ahead and heat it up and roll it back. You always want to start on the corner first and spread the material out, and then come back and you guys can clean that cup from the back. Right now what I'm doing since this is a very deep recess I mean I don't have to get full coverage on it but it's a good habit to just go ahead and try to feed material inside here that way you're not just pushing it in you're feeding from this side and this side inside here
guys um i don't know if you guys saw but we did remove the parking sensors the reason why we do that is because we have to get full coverage in it and with this being a white truck it's not really going to work out that way especially if they protrude like that there's a high possibility of this shrinking so since we pulled this way you guys can already see that the film is um shrinking this way and it'll be kind of a little bit more pronounced if you heat it So before we make that cut, we always want to make sure that we shrink the material. We'll make a circular cut. We'll go ahead and shrink it again. And then we can go ahead and give it a small um, excess material and wrap it around the back. And to prevent it from shrinking any further, you guys always want to heat it up to the specific post heated um, temperature range for your material uh, from Avery and 3M, I believe it's about 175 to 185. And with Enos Tech, it's a little bit higher. But don't um, quote me on those numbers. You kind of just have to look for yourself on that. So right now, we're killing the memory of the film. So with this, I was able to kind of just heat it up and push it down. As you guys can see, it's not too deep in there, but if it was a deeper recessed area, then we would probably have to do some inlays or something like that, just so that the film doesn't peel back on us. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna cut this out and then shrink the material. Since we did pull this way, we may develop some lines right here, but that's not a big deal because we'll leave about, about I would say one, one eighth of a material excess left over and we could just wrap it. All right guys, now that we finished up the bumpers, as you guys can see, everything is put back together. Um, it looks really clean. Um, I know that you guys saw that there was some areas where it did show white, but that's where you have to keep in mind where your trims are at, because if you trim it a little bit too far back, then you may show white. But with this vehicle, as you guys can see, there's some black here that covers up some of the areas that were white. And once everything's put together, it looks really, really clean. So that's it, you guys could apply pretty much all the basic uh, knowledge to what we use in this bumper to other bumpers, um, like the theory of stretch versus cooling and just heating and stuff like that. As you guys go further along into like your wrap um, experience, your wrap knowledge, it's, it's gonna get a little bit easier throughout the time, throughout like the more you do things. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, drop a comment down below, like and subscribe for this video. And if you guys wanna see other things on how to like wrap certain other panels, Please let me know and we'll go ahead and we'll try to cover those for you guys.